Good morning, church. I hope everybody can hear me. And then good morning, uh, good morning to all our uh, brothers and sisters uh, joining us on what we call the Zoom land. And to all those also who may be joining us on YouTube. Uh, this morning, uh, brethren, I want to deal with a very simple and very uh, important subject. And that is about doubts that you and I face. And the best passage I have taken is about the Apostle Thomas. You know, we all know the Apostle Thomas. Uh, oh, let me backtrack and tell you. When Jesus walked, when came to this earth and he, he began his ministry, he selected people, ordinary people. They, the, the people there was ordinary people like you and me. And Jesus decided to choose them and use them to plant his church. And uh, who is Thomas? Uh, Thomas is uh, known as, popularly known as the Doubting Thomas. Now, I hope you agree with me that this particular label is a very unfair label. Um, if, like Thomas, there are scores of people who have doubts. And like Thomas, you and I too face doubts every single day. So to, to single out Thomas and label him as uh, a doubter, I think it's not fair. Uh, we shall explore more on this particular subject. Okay, having said that, the title of my message today is The Apostle Thomas, Lessons We Learn From Him. Okay, what are the lessons that we learn from him? Uh, while preparing the notes, uh, I, I was surprised that there is very little writings on the Apostle Thomas. The writings are sketchy and they are uh, here and there. Yet when I started preparing my notes, I found out six lessons that come out to me. Uh, let me share that with you today, okay? Uh, but before I do that, uh, let me say that I will be as brief as possible, yet as clear as the noonday, uh, because we all know the story and it doesn't require a commentary or explanation. So let me read to you the relevant verses from verses 26 to 29. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach out, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Okay, straight away, let's go to our text. Uh, let's go to the lessons that we want to learn today. Uh, a, comment on, uh, a comment on doubt. Doubt per se is not, a, is not sin. Uh, what I'm trying to say is doubt, when you and I face doubts, it is not a sign of immaturity or it is not a sign of lack of faith. It is normal, it is natural as human beings. And then, so with that comment, let's see, what is the first lesson that we learned? The first lesson I learned is, uh, I have taken it down from one particular writer. I don't know who this writer is, but he has put it very beautifully. The first lesson, humans are emotionally complex. Uh, whenever you and I face problems and challenges, we think of bravery as an important trait. We either have or we don't have. The truth is, sometimes we are braver than others. When Jesus was uh, heading back to Judea to see Lazarus and heal him, the disciples reminded him that Jews had already um, uh, threatened to kill him. A trap was lured and he was going into a, a, what you call a danger zone. So the Jews, the disciples cautioned him. At this point, Thomas makes a very interesting comment. Uh, he says, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go. Uh, Thomas talks about, uh, t -t talking, talks about dying. He says, let us all go that we, we may die with him. You see, <coughs> yeah, beg your pardon. 
Thomas actually is a very brave person. He's a very faithful person. So after a statement like this, let us go that we all may die together. Uh, it is not correct to say that Thomas is a doubting Thomas. Rather, we must uh, label him as Thomas the Brave. But it, it so happened that the emotional impact of Jesus' trial, flogging, and crucifixion had a very a telling effect on his life. Thomas finds it hard uh, to bounce back. He's the only one who was not present when Jesus came the first time. And uh, uh, when he, he was told that uh, the, the Lord is risen, Thomas refuses to believe. He wants to verify for himself. He wants to see hard evidence. Thomas' moment of bravery did not define him. And neither should his moment of doubt define him. You and I, uh, brothers and sisters, we do have moments of proud. We are proud of what we did or what we said, or we are, or we, we wish we could not, we did not say something or did not do something. <clears throat> But Jesus' presence brought, brought Thomas the best out of him. It increased his faith. Conversely, when he was away from Jesus, it seemed to trigger some doubt. So the first lesson that you and I learn is, uh, remember, human beings are emotionally uh, uh, complex. And let's be careful how we uh, define them or how we label them. A second lesson that I want to share with you today is doubt is a teacher, not a master. The, we live in a time when people no longer believe blindly. They doubt blindly. The slogan today is anything and everything is, is questioned and never, and never make any conclusions. We don't have faith. But this seems uh, I mean, contrary to the way people live their lives. Uh, they don't seem to take a position about anything, uh, no matter what. I mean, we trust in our smartphones, we trust in our technology, we trust in government, we trust in um, money, and we trust in ourselves, which is the biggest joke. However, there comes a time when we need to question our cynicism, push through our doubts, and see the faith beneath. Let doubt teach us, but not be the only voice. Jesus tells his disciples at one stage, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be with me where I am. There I am. That is John chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Naturally, the disciples uh, did not understand what he was trying to convey. And uh, Thomas is the first, the only person to raise a point of order. He says, Lord, we don't know where you are going. Uh, how can we know the way? Even though it is obvious that Thomas is missing the greater point, Jesus is making, making every effort to see that Thomas is not upset and he's not frustrated. So he handles the problem with gentleness and he makes a very profound statement. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father. The lesson here is, for you and me, is that you and I shouldn't be ashamed of our questions. Asking questions, seeking clarifications can always lead to new insight and breakthrough. It gives you a better understanding and you are strengthened and your faith increases. Uh, that's all. Uh, that's what all of, uh, is all about the Christian discipline of uh, apologetics. Christian apologetics answers the questions in life, answers not only the big questions, it answers tough questions. And therefore, brethren, the second lesson that we learn is, remember, doubt is a teacher, not a master. And uh, uh, one particular uh, quote, which I jotted down is, faith moves mountains, but doubt creates faith. Okay, let's move to our third lesson. The third lesson is, 
a statement, a very interesting statement uh, John, the Thomas makes, and that is, Jesus is God. Uh, uh, remember the, a week later, what happened? A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, closed, Jesus came, stood behind them, and declared, uh, stood among them, and declared, peace be with you. Then he reached out to Saul, Thomas and said, see my hands, reach out your hands and put, your, put it into my side. Stop doubting and believing. You see, you, uh, Jesus is handling Thomas uh, 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 with gentleness and with care so that he gets the main point. Thomas was unable to understand, but when he when he puts his hand into the wounds of Jesus and touches Jesus' side, in an instant, Thomas goes from believing that Jesus believing Jesus did not rise to believing that Jesus had risen. Jesus is indeed God. Uh, if you read the original Greek, uh, uh, some strong words are used. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, what Thomas is doing is he's asking for evidence. He's asking for uh, uh, evidence, and he's saying unless I, he wants to verify and satisfy himself. And so the original uh, the writings in this particular text says now he wanted to ram his uh, hands into the wounds of Jesus. Uh, the moment of revelation was when Thomas saw Jesus. Not as a man, but as God. Jesus, Thomas saw the risen Lord, and we too see the, through Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We, he lives in us, and we live in him. We see that Jesus is exalted in the highest, to the highest place, that he sits at the right hand. He sat at the right hand of the Father, and we with Thomas can declare with, exalt, with exaltation. We are witnesses of the risen Lord, my God, my Lord. Uh, here I would like to expl explain a, a little thing, one more aspect, and that is, we call it empirical verification. Now, if you, what is empirical verification? I want to uh, verify for myself, and I want to be satisfied for myself. Uh, brethren, Christianity is the only worldview is the only worldview that is 100% accurate. It is the only worldview that can be empirically verified. Uh, the best example I can give you is the resurrection of Jesus. We have ample evidence. On any particular count, the resurrection is a proven uh, uh, historical fact and a scientific fact. For example, how could the stones of the Jesus' tomb be rolled when it was sealed under the Roman emperor's signature? Uh, uh, next question is, how could the, is the, was the body present? Was the body of Christ in the grave or was it not? You can verify that. A third verification was, look at the grave clothes. But Thomas adds a new dimension. He's introducing a new empirically verifiable uh, fact, and that is, he says, I want to touch the person. I want to touch him and feel him, and only then I will believe it. And he does that, and he's, to his great amazement, he comes to realize that Jesus is not man, but he's the, but rather he is God, and he's the same one who lived with him and walked with him. Okay, we have seen lesson one, human beings are emotionally complex. Second lesson, doubt is a teacher, not a master. And third lesson is Jesus is God. Let's move on to our fourth lesson. I just wrote it as the Lord cares for us. Jesus cares for you and for me. How do I know that? Uh, well, uh, you see, second time when Jesus appears, when Jesus uh, appears in the room, he specifically makes a second appearance. He specifically makes a second visit. Why? To meet a broken disciple. Brother, Jesus always cares for people. He cares. He cared for Thomas. He cared for you. And just like that, remember, Jesus' special appearance 
for one missing apostle is what make is what makes the difference he showed that he cared for thomas and uh, it's a beautiful example when you and i don't have to feel that god doesn't care for us just as he cared for thomas he cares for you and for me why did thomas wanted to touch jesus uh, i have explained that uh, but uh, maybe thomas thought that uh, some uh, ghosts were the, the ghost of jesus appeared or maybe he thought that some spirit was masquerading or uh, there was a fraud or a theological impossibility in christ coming to life again there the only solution he believed was empirical verification and he through that he learned brethren in this passage we learn that jesus is the good shepherd he said i am the good shepherd the good shepherd seeks and saves that which was lost when thomas was in dire uh, straits jesus reached out to him let's move on to our next lesson lesson 5 the lord is always with you uh, doubts can arise because of many things uh, it can rise because of our cultural convictions it can rise because of a uh, uh, difficult uh, difficulties to understand lack of evidence it can rise up because of our difficulty to understand illogical uh, truths but i believe that doubts occur when you and i believe we are we are not we are alone in this world do you and i feel that we are all alone in this world do you and i live our lives all by ourselves do we run our lives unilaterally or is there someone uh, besides our family members besides our friends brethren let's remember that jesus our lord and savior is always with you is always with me he is always with you always with me you may not observe you may not feel it you may not notice it but he is always with you and uh, thomas realized that thomas failed to realize and that is why thomas had difficulty it's amazing how many doubts arise when god asks you and me to do something something difficult or to deal with some with someone with a difficult personality brethren let's remember the best way uh, to uh, handle doubt is to remember that christ is with us and he is in us and he will always help us if you just ask return the lord cares for you the lord is always with you and the last uh, lesson that i learned was the last lesson is found in verse uh, it should say 29 verse 29 but jesus said because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe <coughs> so we for that but then the, there is a message for you and for me and and that message is a pronouncement of a blessing thomas believed because he has seen evidence because he was able to verify for himself uh, thomas lived uh, 2000 years ago he walked the dusty lands and uh, he moved with jesus he saw his miracles and yet he had a tough time and he verified for himself and he satisfied brethren you and i don't have that luxury of uh, uh, we didn't have the luxury of walking with him or touching his wounds yet brethren let us remember the pronouncement of a blessing blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed and so these are the six lessons that i just wanted to share with you and then let's wrap up let's remember god made you and me unique he made us wonderful in spite of all our weaknesses in spite of all our drawbacks god still uses us peter peter had a short fuse he was hot headed yet god used peter thomas thomas was a passionate thomas was a passionate preacher uh, paul ex- by, excuse me paul was a passionate preacher he was an overachiever and god could still use him thomas a great doubter yet he became a great believer the symbol of weakness and fear became the pillar of strength and heroism brethren god uses you and me too 
in spite of all our weaknesses. Take heart. Ask God to help you, strengthen you, and to grow as your dear child. Uh, let me ask Praveen, sir, uh, to please conclude this message with a video. Have we as Christians made doubt a sin? Have we taken a very natural reflex that God put into us and made it into a transgression? For example, are reflexes like blinking in the sun or sneezing a sin? There are two pitfalls with doubt. On the one side, you make doubt an unpardonable sin. You make yourself and others believe by force and replace any glance towards land with slogans or platitudes. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. On the other side is to indulge doubt and begin to question everything. We live in an age of dogmatic doubt. No tradition or community of faith system is to be believed. Just watch the movies. Almost every religious character, Christian or otherwise, is secretly living a double life. We end up with a kind of burned out cynicism in which no one and no idea is to be trusted. The big double standard here is that when you doubt everything, you don't doubt your own doubt. Does that make sense? <laughs> you don't doubt your own abilities to question whatever it is you're attacking. Maybe you have your own agenda. Maybe there are secret fears or desires that fuel you and your doubt is not a pure intellectual quest. Doubt can become a snake that bites its own tail after a while. Thomas, the patron saint of doubters, became the great proclaimer, and he can be very encouraging to us. All of us might have had a little trouble if Jesus came back from the dead, which no one had ever done, and everybody just said hooray and believed it without any friction. Thomas proves doubt is not a sin. Thomas is included in Jesus' story because he asked questions like anyone would when seemingly bizarre things happen. And notice Jesus' response. Jesus, who had a pattern of going out of his way for sinners, disabled and unseen people, makes a special trip to come close enough to the doubter that Thomas can touch the evidence himself. And it changed Thomas's doubt into belief and worship. Jesus wants to put our doubts to rest. May Thomas's faith and the Lord's intimate attention turn our doubt into proclaiming our Lord and our God. I'm Greg Williams, speaking of life.